dit heb je straks nodig. Ja, good afternoon, my name is uh, Thomas Rao. And I have a small presentation, and the presentation will be over to two, because I think everything is possible, but what we're missing is new business models to make it possible. So turn two is a, is a new business model in the circular economy and it's about the management of the raw material. How does it come? This is the first photo which is done by a human being from the planet Earth. 1967, Christmas night, he made this photo. That's the first time in the history that the human being is seeing the planet where he's on vacation. Because we have to realize we are the guests. That's it. And that's it. We have to do it with that planet. Nothing will be added in the future. So that means, how do we handle the planet? And the photo is made because of President Kennedy. Because he said in 62, in seven years, we do something, we don't know how much it costs, how to get there, who is doing it. But I know one thing, I'm guided by the future, we go to the moon. So if your target is in the future, your decision in the present will be completely different. So what means guided by the future? That means that we know already we have no energy problem. We didn't have it at all. It's a perfect business model that we pay every month we have to pay for it. But we have enough energy. What we have is an energy demand. So what you see here is it's one of the buildings of our architects because we are used to just to make buildings which are producing energy. Because we, have, we don't have energy work. We don't have to pay tax for that. We're not getting a bill of Godfather. We just have the energy. So there is no energy problem, but there is energy demand. But we have a real problem, and the problem are the raw materials. Because we have a shortage of raw materials. In fact, we don't have a shortage, but we have a shortage because we handle it in the wrong way. So, what you see here, sorry, what you see here is, these are your grandchilds, or your children. Because in some years we have to dig again for the raw materials, we, we, because we just lost them. We just saw the planet Earth, and we said, okay, nothing will be added, so it must be somewhere. If we don't burn it, and we make green energy, all these crazy things, so, but it must be somewhere. That's the way we consume. You remember the telephone from 1953? When you had a problem, you go to your father and he fixed it, and you fix it again, and you cable he put in it, and it worked for years. And then we have the iPhone. 2007, 2009, 2010. And if I would say, oh, I just got the G5, I was in the Apple store in Amsterdam, everybody's getting nervous, how come? He has a G5, I have the G4, so did I miss something? It goes very quickly, because we want to have the newest product. But that means, it's, oh, I have a point, they're very good. So that, that's the past. We had a product, and we used it as long as it was working. If it didn't work, and we want to use it, we fixed it. But now, we're not any more interested in the life cycle of a product. We're just interested in the performance cycle. Because if there's a new product, we don't, we don't want to have it anymore. That means the innovation, the fast innovation, is creating waste if we are consuming in the same way. And of course we have products like this, you know, the printer. He's even not working as long as you want that he's working. So that also creates waste. That means in the linear economy, we have raw materials, we do something with it, we use it, and then we throw it away or we burn it, and then it's lost. But you remember, nothing will be added on the planet in the future. So then we have those two guys, Michael Braungart and Bill McDonald, and they introduced Cradle to Cradle. They said, okay, it's not a good way, Cradle to Cradle. We have to do Cradle to Cradle. That means we have to take care for the raw material in the product. We have a biological circle and we have a technical circle. So that was a brilliant idea, but it was just an idea because we were missing the business model behind that. Because we think there's one problem. We can do it perfectly, we can make a perfect carpet or, or chairs, or whatever. But if we organize it in a way that the product is not coming back, 
and there's not an extra value for the consumer, it doesn't matter if you're cradle to cradle or noodle to noodle, nobody cares. So we have to change that. How can we change that? And that was the idea from turn two. So turn two said, okay, we have to fix the leak. We have to organize the consuming in a different way so that the product is coming back and the, and the value of the raw material is not getting lost. So turn two is a kind of a mediator in between the producer and the consumer. But how does it work? For step one, forget ownership. Performance counts. It's completely crazy what we're doing. You buy a television, you call it television, it's a kind of a poison bomb, and you put it in your living room, and you look at television. And then you have to take care for all the chemicals in the television. So we buy a lot of stuff, and we have to take care for it. But we are not interested in the product itself, we're interested in the performance of the product. You know, nobody is buying a plane when you go from Amsterdam to New York. You don't want to have it. You want to have the performance. Just a seat and the, you want to be flying to New York. So you pay for the performance. So if you go by train from Amsterdam to, Ut to Utrecht, you don't buy a train. You just buy the performance to be transported. So we know that already. That means in the future, we don't buy a car. You just say, okay, I just take that one for 50,000 kilometers. And you say to Philips, you know what? I want to have 300 lux, 1600 hours a year. I want to have light hours. And if you need a lamp for it, I'm fine. I just want to have light. And if you need milk or juice or electricity, that's your problem. I just pay for the light. Why should you buy a washing machine if you just have, want to have washes? Second step, that means that the producer retain ownership of the raw material. So that means he will be confronted with the consequence of his own acting for all the time. Because he has to take care for the product when the consumer doesn't want to have it anymore. That means we have to design everything in a way as a raw material bank. Everything is a raw material bank. The dresses, your shoes, the chairs, the, the camera, the laptop, everything is in the future a raw material bank because we have to take care for it. So the material is now the camera, maybe tomorrow it's a chair. So that means every product has a special value, the value of the raw material. And what you see here is, this is the last project of raw architects, now we are realizing a building as a raw material bank. So we are banking the material for 20 years in the building, and after 20 years it will be disassembled, and then we are reactivating the value of the raw materials. That means the client does has to pay for the value of the raw material. How does it work? Because if this is a product, then, then this is the value of the raw material. And that's what we have to share. We have to share the product value. We have to split it from the value of the raw material. And then the raw material is not anymore part of the pricing of the product. Step three, that means we have to know what is in it. So we need a kind of a raw material passport. Because we want to get it back in the future. We have to know, okay, we have so, so much copper, so much steel, so much of this material in the product. So that means in the future, the raw material which is now in the earth, it's now on the earth. It's coming up by the human being and we bank it in all the stuff we are doing. And we have to keep it there. The earth is keeping something and now we have to take care for it in the product. So we have to split the product value from the raw material value, and we can do that because turn two is the mediator. Turn two is getting the product from the producer, is splitting the product value from the raw material value, the client is just paying for the product value, 
then the product is coming back, it's going to the producer, and he's giving back the money for the raw material value. So, that means consuming in the future means consume as a protector of the raw material. So there's nothing wrong with it to consume. The only thing we have to do, we have to consume in a different way. We have to produce in a different way, and we have to finance it in a different way. So this is the new business model to consume in the future. And what we learned from that important photo from 1967, that we can't change the world. Every good idea can't change the world, because that's the world. The only thing we can change is the perspective to the world. Thank you very much.